Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, so the Quent single player campaign. We're still in the lovely boots of Queen Meave of Lyria, wandering through the Lyrian countryside. We need to head towards Lord Clayton's estate to see what else he knows about the uh, bandits we've been fighting. And, uh, well, there's, uh, we've bumped into this uh, wedding over here, so the Cardus Field, so let's head into this little town. We heard about this, and I don't know why that did that, but there we go. caught brisk music and voices raised in song. She had no doubt. A wedding ceremony had just begun in a hamlet just off the high road. When the bride's father spotted the royal retinue, he rushed up to beg the queen to bless the newlyweds. Meave obliged cordially. Encouraged, the father boldly invited Meave and her court to join in the festivities. You do us a right honor, my lady. And your men had bolster the strength of all to march ahead. We beg ye, eat, drink, and rejoice with us. Okay, seems like a good plan. So let's join in the wedding celebrations. I haven't slippers to dance in, but I trust I'll manage somehow. Lead on, good man. The nuptials took place in the shade of a vast oak tree. Then the newlyweds and their guests walked in procession to a barn adorned with flowers. An uproarious celebration ensued. As she watched her soldiers dance shoulder to shoulder with peasants, Meave felt a surge of pride at being their queen. The heart of Lyria. It beat most powerfully here, not in the gilded halls of palaces. Okay, so let's continue on. Suddenly a cry went up as strange armed men rushed into the yard. There's the lass! Grab her! Before anyone could stop them, the bandits took the bride and fled into the woods. Okay, why well, would they do that? The drums and fiddles, suddenly silenced, were now replaced by weeping, moaning, angry calls for pursuit. Deep grief upon his face, the host turned to Meave with a plea. Milady, we beg of you, help us! Okay, so gather your retinue and travel on or order your soldiers to pursue. Of course we're gonna pursue. We'll not leave you wanting, good man! Shouted the queen, slipping her feet into her stirrups. Follow me! Yeah! The earth trembled beneath the weight of horse and hoof. Tankards laid out for a midnight toast to the bride and groom clinked prematurely in the quake. And the Lyrians charged forth into the dark wood. Okay, let's see what we can find here. So that means <laughs> the, the wedding turned uh, really sour. Let's take a look around to see what materials we can gather and then we should move on I suppose what are these guys talking about your majesty fishermen dragged out an old object from Yavina they claim it emits a magical aura of sorts as it's of no use to them they're willing to part with it for a modest sum magical artifacts and curiosities are the rightful property of the crown requisition defined immediately or just pay them so uh yeah let's so let's do this so be it let's see what they've uncovered give them their coin and it's part of a commander's horn card okay seems like that would be a nice addition to our deck a really powerful one if it's the same uh way well it works the same way as in the in the game oh, to be young again heart bursting with love Okay. Oh, to be young okay. Again. Okay. Okay. Heart bursting with love. good folk. The queen's returned. Welcome her. We must tribute in hand. Okay. Thank you for the wood. Ah, <laughs> our queen. Why pretty as a painting she is. Okay. He's a bit uh, much, isn't he? So let's see. So these guys must have run through here. Cause there's no real other way. My queen, your subjects are troubled. A cow has given birth to a two-headed calf. An omen for impending war. You can send the priestess of Melitolate to dispel it, but not without cause. Hmm. So we can get a bit of morale from that, but I think we're already at max. So I have a better idea. Let's slaughter the calf and return to the road. There we go. Taking care of that without any wins, gains or losses, so... Happy with that. And this is again the same area we've been to already. This is weird. Let me take a look around if I can find anything. 
Okay, so there's a shack that's apparently locked, but I can open that up and now we can loot it. And we get a bit of gold and a bit of wood. My fluffy sweet bun. My heart aches, but I cannot sneak away. So many have arrived in the village, it's become impossible to slip away unnoticed. I spun a tail for my nosy aunties to escape, even for this briefest of moments. I managed to sneak some silverware under my dress, but I think it's best to leave it here for now and return once the hysteria has died. Soon we'll have enough to begin our new life together. I'll watch for you forever yours. Interesting. B. Is that pointing towards a character we've seen already or not? I'm not sure. Because if that's the bride that just ran off like that, that would be horrible. Oh, oh, there's the bride. Hello. Though the Lyrian cavalrymen had imbibed spirits throughout the night, they not only managed to stay upright in their saddles, but even gained on the bandits and cut off any chance of escape. Okay, and there we go then. Fight ensues. Let's see. So this is... It's special rules with a shortened battle, but we have our normal deck. So the battle was waged in a dense dark wood, moonbeams moon beams scarcely piercing its canopy. Had it not been for the bribe's radiant white dress, the Lyrians might not have determined the enemy's position. And so, seeing double, they staggered to battle, the taste of cold vodka still on their lips. So prevent the bandit abductor from reaching the right side of the row. Okay, interesting. So the battle will only last one round. At the beginning of a round, you can redraw up to six cards now. Get rid of the cards from your hand that you don't wish to play. Uh, so that might be fine. Boost this unit by five. So I can only do that once. So let's just replace a few of the sightmen. Let's do that. What can Lord Caldwell do? Play a copy of each adjacent unit from your deck. Fair enough. And then summon all copies of this unit, which is fine. And boost the unit by 10. I don't think I will have much use for boosting. Probably more for damaging. So that's... Get rid of the Fortitude Tonic. And get rid of the War Wagon. Yeah, that seems fine. Although I could remove the Lily Incitement as well. Hmm, let's do that. Stop them! Okay. So we need to destroy uh, the the abductor, but well, he has 25 armor. So every turn on turn start, move one place to the right. Whenever this unit takes damage, move one place to the left. If this unit moves the, to the rightmost side of the row, Meave is defeated. So whenever this unit takes damage, move one place to the left. And then the artifacts are just the huts. Okay, okay. So let's do what? Wait, what's the artifact I have? The Lyrian Banner Permanent Resilience. When Meave uses her ability, reduce her cooldown by one. Move to the other row. So let's use the pikeman first. Pairs late. Again. And let's end the turn. Because I don't want to damage it while it's moving. Yeah, yeah. And these guys mark a unit every turn on turn start. Damage it by one. When the marked unit is destroyed, mark another random enemy. Fair enough. So let's start doing this and put the Wagenberg down. Because I can order it to do some damage later on. So there we go. He's going to start attacking my units. And then the Wagenberg has been targeted as well. Okay. Then next up, I think I should play the Regiment Drummer. Just to have that order left, going. Right, left, right. I need to start boosting as well. So boost an ally by four and then give it one armor. So let's do that on the Wagenberg. There we go. So that's one armor extra and let's end the turn. Is he gonna just keep set a row on fire? We must stop them. Okay. So, when Meave uses her ability, reduce her cooldown by one. Should have done that sooner, probably. But, let's start attacking with the our first Arbalest. So, if I can do that... Give me a time. He moves to the left, so that's four... Uh, over there, and then damage all units on an enemy row by this unit's armor amount. Then lose all armor. 
I'm gonna lose armor every time anyway, so let's just damage the that row, I suppose. There we go. Let's do more damage on that. And now we can end the turn and move forward. Catch! And that's another row on fire. Um, I don't know who, if I'll be able to put Count Caldwell down. Let's Keep see. Calm, Tiberius. So there we go. A copy of that one. Of the drummer. Again and again. And now I can use the other drummer to play the top blitz unit from my deck. And that's the Sightman. Fair enough. Hi. And then I keep boosting the armor of this one. But that's not what I wanted to do. But yeah. More units are never, never too bad. Um, I can't use her just... Oh, I can. Um, I can heal up this guy. There we go. Then we trigger the Loyal ability. Which Loyal ability actually does damage? Loyal, damage a random enemy nearest to self by two. Oh, that is interesting. Did miss that, but that's going to be interesting if I start putting down Arbalests now. The chase is on! So another marked unit, which is not that bad. Now I can actually use the top Blitz unit from my deck. Uh, so let's do that first. And there we have whatever that is. Can actually see what I want to play there. Can't take it. Spawn two light infantry on the right, okay? Because I need to put those arbalests down as well. There we go. Because what's the reach on the arbalest? There's no reach. Okay, fair enough. Arbalest, your command. And attack. Can I use this? No. It's a bit. How do I see? Ah, the cooldown is down there. Okay, fair enough. This guy also has cooldown. What does he do? Every two turn on turn start, move a bandit abductor one position to the right. So you can do that twice, probably. Okay, looks like we're in pretty good shape right now. Most of our units are defended. And it just keeps marking targets, which is not bad. Now, I think I can only put eight units on the same road. So now the little... Oh, no. I can put nine on there. Which is fine by me. Let's do the Lyrian Arbalest. And charge that guy. And then I think I can use her ability now. Boost my lowest unit since it's marked. And then we trigger all loyal abilities. Which is 3 times 2 damage. And it's over. There we go. Victory. So that was probably not as hard as I made it out to be. There we go. Was that supposed to hurt? Meave's troops defeated the bandits All and rescued and accounted the bride. For. Only to be surprised. For the maiden fair dropped to her knees and burst into tears of sorrow, not joy. Weep not, child. The queen said, placing her arm upon her shoulder. It's over. You're free. Nay, not so, your majesty. My lady, I've no love for Jan. No wish to wed him. It's my father. My family forced me. My heart's bimbers, he arranged the masquerade. I beg ye, if you've one ounce of kindness, if you've a heart, let us leave this place together and free. Oh, that is, uh, well, not such a big turn of events. So that means the letter we found is from her. From her. Interesting. So give the lovers leave to flee or send the girl home. I must think about my reward, of course. I mean, if it's just a moral decision, yes, we should give the lovers leave to flee. But I feel like the reward would be better if I sent the girl home. Um, since the village will be very happy. Um, and I think I'm going to go for that. People are going to hate me for this, oh, but I'm there we go. Heart, answered the queen. Yet I've also a head with which to reason. Your beloved spilled blood this day. A grave crime. He shall answer for it. While you, my dear, must go home. Upon spotting the queen returning with the bride, the revelers ran out to meet them. Not wishing to rile the crowd, Meave revealed the truth of the matter solely to the newlyweds' families. They, in turn, annulled the freshly made union and, in gratitude for her aid, gave the queen all the gifts the guests had brought. Oh, so that was, I think, the correct decision, because they annulled the freshly made union, so... 
she did need to actually... Ooh, there goes the morale, by the way. She did need to uh, marry that man anyway. So this card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. Lyrian Merlot. And what does that do? I'll check that out later. So just, just gonna... Ooh, look at that. And I got a lot of money for that. And now we can loot these guys as well. And that actually got us a lot. The only thing it didn't get us was morale. Which is too bad. Can I actually return now to the village to see what happened there? Seems like everything is fine. I can talk to this oh, woman. Jan. Pity the lad. True, he's no looker, but he's got an art of gold. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So pity they're just pitying the to be young again. The Harp groom that lost his uh, his bride to be. Ups, ups, merry little plant, but ends without ye revel we shan't. Okay. Start singing. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I think, for the wedding. So let's move forward again. I think we might take a look at that uh, cave we just passed before. Uh, but first, let's pitch the command tent and see what we can uh, do with that new card we got. So the command tent. And then we have... Hmm, so we have the Fortitude Tonic, but what does the Lyrian Merlot does do? Boost the lowest ally by the power of the highest ally. That is interesting. Could be a lot. Might just add that to the... The Fortitude Tonic there. And then we have Reynard and Count Caldwell. Yeah, okay, I think the rest is fine. Although we have Decoy as well. Return an ally from the battlefield to hand. So I only have the possibility to add two trinkets. So special cards are called Trinkets and Throne Breaker. So I can't add Decoy as well. So the Fortitude Tonic or Decoy, I think, yeah. We should probably stay with the... Although Decoy could allow us to reuse a card... I'm gonna wait with it. I'm gonna stick to the 42 tonic. So that's that. So, and now we're gonna upgrade the training grounds to have a forager's quarter as well, which allows us to gain between 25 and 75 gold for every battle we win, I think. Because rest, yeah, I can't do anything else with that. Because uh, I don't have enough wood, actually. So let's just go for that first, so we get more gold every time we win something. There we go. The sooner we get that, the better, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it. They improved the training grounds over here, so that is fine. And then maybe check out the mess stand really quickly. Anybody else have anything to say? Yes, Your Grace. Apparently it's not. Time I attended to other matters. There we go. So that means we can move on. So I actually found the hidden area up the uh, to a higher area that we were before. And there we go. Congratulations, you can use this avatar border in the Gwent multiplayer game. Oh, thank you for that. A lovely gold border. We got a bit of wood from a previous drop as well. And there seems to be a merchant of some kind over there, but I can't go up there, I think, no. I just loaded in that part of the map, I think. So uh, let's continue on. So I need to be careful because, of course, morale is low, but it seems like Drowners attacked a group of people here. And a puzzle usually means that I get a custom deck, so I don't think morale really matters. So here we go. Meave stood on the banks of Badger Run, a modest river with a strong current and dark reputation. Fishing boats overturned, clothes ripped from the hands of washerwives, children playing on the bank, swept away in a flash. The locals have long suspected that something malicious resides underneath those raging waters. Eliminate all drowners, do not let any allies die, and as a hint, it takes just one damage to turn an even into an odd. So again, this is a puzzle with one round, which we just need to use. Uh, we need to kill all the drowners, so that's clear. And it doesn't seem like the enemy has any cards. So that's... Okay, set the power of each unit on this row to the average of all units' power. Then destroy self. Set the power of each unit on this road to the average of all units' power. Then destroy self. So I think I have it. If I just put the Wagenberg down... What's the range on use any of these? No, there's no range. Do these actually do something? Every turn on turn start, if this unit's power is even, switch rows and damage all units on the opposite row by two okay so that makes it more complicated okay 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 
So every turn on turn start, if this unit's power is even, switch rows and damage all units on the opposite row by two. If this unit's power is even. So we need to make one or both rows, one or the other row, uneven, both of them. And then we can use the Wagenberg to take care of the rest. But I need to be careful that I don't get my Wagenberg killed or damaged in any way. So I need to put my units down on the row opposite the one that I'm going to actually use. Switch rows and damage all units on the opposite row by two. Does that mean that it targets the row it's on or the row it will be on? I'm going to assume that it damages the units on the opposite row. So the row it goes to. So if it goes to the melee row, it's going to attack the units on the melee row. So, okay. So if we use the Lyrian Arbalest to damage one of the Drowners, it will stay on its row. So if you just put it on the um, ranged row I'm a and damage the front Drowner, we have one Drowner that will stay in its place. So there we go. So it moves, it damages the, yeah, it only damages the unit that actually moves back. So let's pull the Lyrian Arbalest back with decoy and end the turn. It does heal. And now use the Lyrian Arbalest again to damage the front row Drowner. Lyria! There we go. So now we have two Drowners that stay in place. They will move to the front row and won't damage me. And now, of course, in the next turn... Set the power of each unit on this row to the average of all units power, then destroy itself. What happens if I use that on something that isn't advisable? Well, I guess we'll see. Ah, okay, so now they're all on three. Okay, fair enough. That's exactly how I wanted that to work. So let's end the turn. And now we have the Wagenberg, damage all units on an enemy row by this unit's armor amount and lose all armor, so we gain one armor every time something appears. So let's just put that down. And then the turn. And then we can actually use the War Wagon to add three more units on the field and use the Wagenberg to damage that entire row by three. There we go. Okay, that was a bit of a, a brain teaser there. That was, that was lovely, that was lovely. A bit of calculus, but we got out of there without a hint. So, a bit more gold, and then a letter. Son, damned collector stopped by Hawksburn again. And once again, we survive by the skin of our teeth, so our beloved queen can import yet another Zeracanian rug. Devils, take her, I say. Gather anything of worth in the cottage and wrap it, greased, wrap it up in greased sheepskin, I suppose. Take it to the field and among the sheaves bury it. These cursed collectors will just have to make do with what pittance we give them. And then we have the, that's a field and it's on the lower side of the field near a haystack. Okay, we'll check that out in a second. More gold and wood. I definitely need wood. But for now, this is mostly gold. Let's go and find that treasure. So they must have hidden it nearby. So if I'm... A betting man, I would say over here. There we go. Easy does it. And another treasure chest for us. And we get... Ooh. You've discovered a card that can be used in the Gwent multiplayer card game. Lippy Gudmund. But it, why does it say 150? That's a very high number for this game. But uh, yeah, with that done, moving on. We killed some drowners. Well, well. <laughs> Seems humans are nearly the same after all. Yeah. Nothing left in Wetterton for me now. Close me shop and share the road with you. Oh, so there we go. There was a dwarf outside Wetterton here. The 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 village we cleared for the... Well, we saved the dwarves and elves from that pogrom. And that dwarf just actually joined our ranks, which is nice. So that's an extra recruit. And we have two things. It looks... Ooh, yeah, there's a grave hag over there on the left. But I think we're going to check out this cave first. Let's check that out. 
My lady, the locals claim a treasure is hidden within the cave. We could send a small detachment to learn what truth there is to the rumor. I must admit, at first glance, it appears rather treacherous. I can't guarantee everyone will turn in one piece, if at all. This rumor, we shall put it to the test, of course, because we can get treasure from that. Have the men draw lots, see who among them shall go. There we go, 200 gold for just checking out a cave and losing two men to that cave. I'm sorry about that, but... Um... Then I'm assuming we're going to have to check out that grave hag over there. Is she? We can talk to her. The Lyrians entered the graveyard. Crickets chirped in its tall, windswept grass, and lush green moss covered its crumbling gravestones. Only a fresh bloodstain upon a mausoleum wall suggested that something disturbed the dead in their rest and hunted the living. She your tears throw off your grief. An eerie voice sang, its ghastly lament standing Meave's hair on end. Soon your life too shall cease as you pass into the eternal glow. A pockmarked, pustule-ridden creature crawled out from behind some gravestones. It vaguely resembled a shriveled, hunchbacked hag, until its head split into two halves, forming a tooth-spiked maw. Attack! Everyone! Yeah, indeed, a grave hag. I love how the subtitles, uh, the text was actually crawling when the grave hag was talking. Battle! Battle it is! So puzzle, special rules, short battle, so it's a puzzle again, so that's good because my morale has been at an all-time low. What exactly was the monster Meave encountered at the cemetery? The inhabitants of Wetherton called it a mourner. They believed it to be a she-elf, driven mad after her children were killed. From time to time, she would return to their graves to light candles, lay flowers, and make an offering of human blood. Simple, kill the grave hag. Okay. So that means this battle will last only one round and we get a custom deck or not. Yeah, it is a custom deck. Kill the grave hack. And okay, that's pretty much it. Let's see what's on the field. So the grave hack is immune, so we can target her directly. And every two turn on turn start, destroy the lowest unit. Okay, and we also don't have a leader. And then the Rot Fiend spawn a base copy of this unit when you deploy it, but it's already deployed, so... And then we have damage all units on this row by four. So if we can force her to kill one of the Rot Fiends within the first two turns, then that should be fine. So she destroys the lowest unit, right? So that means I'm gonna lose a unit Anyway, so let's just start with the Lyrian Sightman. There's a time to reap, a time to and, sow. And time the to turn. What is in my deck? So three more Arbalests, okay. So that means I can use Count Caldwell at the last turn. So let's put the Lyrian Sightman down. I... I'm gonna lose one of them. Oh no, the lowest units. Okay, yeah, I fucked myself there. Let's try that again. So I need, yeah, I need to boost my damage output here. So let's just put one little incitement down and then the turn and then damage the uh, one of the rot fiends by two, which will destroy uh, my sightman later on. Okay, fair enough. So let's end the turn. Right now. So she destroyed that, which means that if I now go into another Lily Incitement and the turn and damage. I can actually do this immediately now. So if I use another Arbalest and damage the one I damaged already, she's gonna destroy that Wolf Fiend, right? So there that goes, and 4 damage on every one of those. 
which means that she can actually destroy those herself in two turns, but I'm not gonna get two turns anymore. That is also interesting. So there we go, a one and two Arbalests. Can I focus on her now? I will do five damage, so that's more. But I need to destroy one of the Rock Fiends, because the damage they do will actually kill her. There we go. And that's gonna kill her again. Yeah, okay, there we go. We're all gonna be dead. Goodbye, Grave Hag. Victory! What... what was that filth? The Queen croaked hoarsely as the dying monster writhed in agony at her feet. I know not, Your Grace, replied Reynard. But to be safe, I would have the corpse chopped up and burned. Elsewise, we will not be certain it shall not return. Yes, have it done. Sounds Me like said, very wise brushing advice. Brushing her hair from her beaded brow. But quickly, lest dust catch us in this foul place. The Lyrians soon resumed their march. As they left the cemetery behind them, some believed they still heard the haunting dirge upon the air. Or was it just the wind whistling past mossy tombstones? Well, that was a haggard lament. That was creepy. This card has been added to your army and can be found in the command tent. Meave Warhammer. That sounds awesome. You can change, change Meave's equipped weapon that's changing her ability. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Let's just grab all the stuff here. Um, if I can... No? There we go. That's one. Probably was already in the area. That's a bit of a bug. There we go. Burning up the grave hag. Let's check out the command tent. So I can't apparently do anything in my camp right now. That's a bit odd. But let's just check out the rest of the loot here. And... Ooh, what's that? That doesn't seem like something nice. Let's just clear out the rest of the area first. And uh, before we check on that, we're gonna actually take a little break. So let's just grab that. And that should be everything, I think. So I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. When we get back, we're going to check out that shack in the back and see what will happen over there. But I think we did a lot today. We rescued them a wedding, kind of. Not entirely, but something like that. Then we killed a few drowners and now that grave hack. So all in the day's work. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And uh, see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.